Hello, my name is Keshwani. S K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. If you decide that you want to have some more practice to, to, to prepare yourself a little bit better, you will find, I don't have it with me, but you will find that we have all, this is the sixth edition that I'm holding in my hand. I left the fourth, fourth edition in the other room, uh, fifth, edi fifth edition, the previous edition, fifth edition in the other room, so I'm not going to leave right now. But if you, if you are interested in, in getting better prepared for the exam and if you want to practice the questions that appeared in the previous editions, you will find the solutions to all the previous editions questions on day number 1 through 80. Day 1 through 80. There are no videos from 81 through 100. I began a new series with day 101 for the 6th edition. Today we are going to talk about the concept of normal distribution. Concept that you will find on page number 87. Today is our lesson number 138. Let's start by putting on, uh, putting on the blackboard an example. And then we'll talk about what, what it means when we talk about normal distribution. Here's an example. So an exam was given, the quiz was given in the, in the class. Let's just say, let's just say the next maximum score was 10. It really doesn't matter whether the maximum score in the quiz was 10 or 10,000. It doesn't matter. All it matters to us is that one student had, had a score of one point, two students had a score of two points, Three students had a score of three each. I need more room. I need more room and I want to, I don't want to do it on two lines. Let's start again. So we have a one, a two, and a two, and a three, and a three, and a three, and a four, and a four, and a four, and a four, and a, four, a five, and a five, a five, and a five, and a six, and a six, and a seven. And our, our job, we are told to plot, to, to, to plot a frequency distribution. Plot a frequency distribution. Frequency distribution is exactly what it means, what it says. Frequency distribution is so called because it's going to show us the frequency of a given value. How often does the given value appear in the data set? How often does the given value appear in the data set? How do we plot it? Well, let's begin, shall we? When we talk about frequency distribution, on the y-axis is the frequency. This is a very different graph than the graph we are used to looking at most of the time, where we plot on the graphs two variables. This is, listen very carefully, ordinarily we have some variable on the x-axis, which happens to be an independent variable on x-axis, and then we have a dependent variable on the y-axis. That is not what we're talking about here. That is not what we're talking about here. We're not plotting two variables. One more time, listen carefully, because there is only one variable. Only one variable is here, which is the score. That's it. That's the only variable. What we're plotting here is how often do different values of this variable appear. How often do you see a score of 7? How often do you see a score of 3? How often do you see a score of 2? How often do you see a score of 10? Well, I see no score of 10. Nobody scored 10. The highest was 7. But that's the question. How often does the given value appear? That's why it's called frequency distribution. It's not independent variable, independent variable, and x-axis and y-axis. It's a frequency distribution. And frequency distribution, we put frequency on the y-axis. Always, always, always. And on the x-axis, is not an independent variable, as I told you before, already twice, twice or thrice, because there is only one variable, which is the score. So we put this value, values or observations, if you like, values or observations, if you like. How often do they appear? Well, let's get going, shall we? Well, I see the most, most often, the value that appears most often is the 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the highest frequency we have is 4. So I'm just going to put that's going to be the highest. So here we go. Watch what happens. One, two, three, and four. We have to do a decent job of it because otherwise the shape, otherwise the shape is not going to look very nice. I wanted to, I wanted to make it look very nice, very, very presentable. So let's begin, shall we? And here are going to be the values, and the values go all the way from one to seven. 
one through seven. So we're going to put seven values here. Here we, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's just see what happens. I had more room. I could have spread them out a little bit more. But it's already done. How often do you see a value of one? See, these are the values. How often do I see a value of one? How many, in other words, how many people had a score of one? Let's find out, shall we? Oh, only one guy. Only one guy had a score of one. There's a score of one. How many people had a score of one? Only one person. That's the frequency. That's how often it appeared. How often did we see a value of two? How many people scored two? Well, let's see. Oh, two people scored two. Interesting. Two people scored two. Two people. Two people. Let's see. There is a frequency. Two people had a score of two. Ah, oh, interesting. I wonder. I wonder how many people score scored three. I wonder. Do you wonder? The suspense is actually, the suspense is killing me. The suspense is absolutely killing me. I wonder how many people have scored three. Aha! Three people had a score of three. Three people had a score of three. So three appears three times. This is the frequency. One, two, three. Three times it appears. What appears three times? A score of three appears three times. I wonder how many times four appears. Now we understand in real life it's not like this. This is the babyish version of it, just to understand the concept of it. In real life it's not that sweet. How, how often does four appear? Four appears four times. So here's the four frequency of four, and here's the value of four. It appeared four times. I wonder how often five appeared. Ah, five appeared three times. Three appears three times and five appears three times. A value one more than four appears three times. A value one less than four appears three times. You see how nice and symmetric it is? It appeared three times. How, how often do you support six appears? Six appeared twice. A value two more than four. Two four is right in the center here. A value two more than four appeared twice. A value two less than four appeared twice. How often do you suppose we see seven? Seven is three more than what we see in the middle here, the center, the mode. This is the mode because it appears most often. A value that is three away from the mode, most frequently appearing value, mode, this is the mode. This four is the frequency. Don't get confused by this four and that four. This four represents the value and this four represents the fact that we have four of them. One, two, three, four. How often does 7 appear? A value 3 more than what appears most often. 3 more than that. How often does it appear? Only once. Just like, so 7 which is 3 more than 4 appears once and 1 that is 3 less than 4 appears also once. You see how nice and symmetric it is? When you have observation, of course in real life you don't, nobody, nobody in their right bloody mind is going to sit there and try to plot a frequency distribution with only seven observations. Frequency distributions are usually plotted when you have hundreds of observations. And when you have hundreds of observations and you plot each value how often it appears, if you have a, long, if you have a big data set you will find that most phenomenon in the universe takes the value, takes the shape of what is known, or what is known as a normal distribution. It takes the shape of a bell curve right here. Here we go. I'm going to do it freehand because even though there is no zero here, but I'm just going to do it freehand. Voila. Now, in reality, in reality, it just doesn't drop like this. It has a little. If if, if you were to plot it, it doesn't just it doesn't go like it doesn't go like that. It it doesn't go like that. It goes something like this. It takes a shape something like this. It it, it doesn't drop abruptly. It it will go something like this. Voila. You see that? But here, because we only have few observations, this is your normal distribution. Normal distribution is, is very symmetric. Why is it very symmetric? Because half the observations are half the observations are below the mode. This is the mode. The peak tells you which what is the most frequently appearing value. It, the peak of the of the of the distribution tells you which value appears most often. Why? Because the reason why it is peak is because it appears most often. It appears four times. Which value appears four times? Four appears four times in this case. And half the observations are going to be below it, half the observations are going to be above it. 
You see, here, here's our fours, and we have three, two, and one. Six observations below the fours, three, two, and one. Six observations above the four. You see how symmetric it is? This is called normal distribution. The mode here is four. Mode here is the four. What do you suppose is the median? So let's make a note of it here. Mode is four. What do you suppose is the median of these observations? What does median mean? Median means half the numbers are above it and half the numbers are below it after the observations have been arranged in either ascending order or descending order. Well, let's see how many observations do we have. We have three and two and one. There's six observations here, six observations there, six plus six is 12, and four more here. 12 plus four is 16 observations. Since we have even number of observations, since we do not have odd number of observations, since we have even number of observations, the, more, the median is going to be the average of the two middle observations. So we, we take away this four to this side, we take away this four to that side, we take the average of these four, well, the average of four and a four is just going to be four. The median is four. I wonder what the mean is going to be. Mean. Let's find out mean. What, let's find out what the mean is going to be. Shall we? I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to rewrite this value so you can actually see it. So this is called frequency distribution. Plot of frequency distribution. This is called frequency distribution because it tells you how frequently different values appear. I'm going to rewrite these numbers so we can figure out the mean. It was one, two, two, three, 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 four, 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 four. 5, 5, 5, 6, 6, and 7. I'm going to leave it up to you to actually do the work. You're going to add up all the numbers and divide by the number of observations, and you will see that mean is also 4. And I'm going to prove it to you that mean is 4. Mean, in the previous video, yesterday's video, day 137, we talked about it. Mean is an egalitarian concept. Mean, average, is an egalitarian concept. Egalitarian is a word that we learn on day number 30 in our vocabulary lessons. Just type in vocabulary words day 30 and you learn the word egalitarian. Mean is an egalitarian concept where everybody has to be equal. The value, the magic number that makes everyone equal is 4 here. 4 is the mean. Watch also basic math if you want to practice a little bit more on the concept of average. Day 68 through 75 a series of uh, a series you will find on my channel called basic math. It's, called, it's so called because it, it starts out with very rudimentary concepts. And on day 68 to 75, we do some problems dealing with the concept of average. And if you don't want to watch all of them, at least watch 68, 69, and 70. The mean here is 4. If you do all the work, and you'll see it is 4. And I'm going to show you why. But these are already 4, so we don't have to worry about them. This is a 5. We need to make it a 4. Take away 1. Now it's a 4. But if you take away 1, what do you do with it? I'll give it to this guy. Now he's 4, he's 4. That's a 5. We, well, we don't want 5. We want 4. We, we want it to make it 4. We, everybody should be 4. Take away $1 from him, give it to this guy. Take away $1 from him, just give it to this guy. Oh, that guy has $6. No, no, no. Everybody should have $4. That's the mean. But how do we make it 4? Take it 2 from here and give it to this guy. Take away 2 from this guy, give it to this guy. Oh, this guy has $7. That's too much. He's supposed to have only $4. Take away $3 from him. What are you going to do with those $3? Well, give it to the poor guy. There you go. Now, everybody has four. This is four, this is four, this is four, 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 four. These were already four. Take away one, it becomes four, 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 and four. Everybody's four now. So what do we learn? What, do we le what we learn here is that, in the case of normal distribution, because it is symmetric around the mean, Normal distribution is always symmetric around the mean. Mean is 4 here, it's symmetric because however many observations we see uh, that, uh, that on this side uh, of the difference, it's the same number of observations you're going to see here. They balance each other out, they negate each other. They negate each other, they balance each other out. And in the case of normal distribution, you will always find that in normal distribution, in the case of normal distribution, the mean, the mode, and the, and the median are always equal. Mean equals to the mode which equals the median. And the mode here is 4. Mode here is 4. It only has one, four, one mode. There is only one number that appears the most frequently here. This is the last remark I'm going to make before we, before we close the video. 
there's only one number that appears most frequently here. Sometimes you see uh, uh, situations where two different values appear equal number of time. You, will, you might see four students had a score of four and four students had a score of eight. That's possible. Why not? It is quite possible that four, scores, four students in the class had a score of eight and four students in the class had a score of four. Now we see two different values with the same frequency. That is not what we're dealing here. That is not what we're dealing, uh, dealing with here. Here we only have one value that appears most often, which is a four. That's our mode. Our mode is four. And since that's the only value that appears most often, this normal distribution is unimodal. Unimodal. It has only one mode. It has only one mode. Let me quickly go through my notes. I want to make sure I didn't leave out anything. So a distribution with a single clear peak a distribution with single clear peak, this is a single peak, it's very clear, it's very easy to see. A distribution with a single clear peak is known as unimodal. It has only one mode. Mode here is 4. And this distribution that you see here is what is known as normal distribution. That's the technical term for it. People also refer to this sometimes as, as, as bell curve. It is also referred to in the layman's term, in the colloquial term, it is referred to as the bell curve. What else do we call it? It's a bell shape. It's something, some people call it bell shape. Bell, bell shape, bell curve, or normal distribution. They all mean the same thing. Whether, some, some, whether somebody is ref referring to a data set as bell shape, or bell curve, or normal distribution, they're talking about this guy. I think that's all I have for today. See you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.